Welcome to our lecture online. The interior of Jupiter, just like it is for all the major gas planets, is a little bit mm, mysterious. We're still trying to figure it out and most of what we learn is through theoretical calculations and through using logic based upon the actual measurements we can take. We know a lot more about the atmosphere and we had a probe that went through the atmosphere into the planet taking all kinds of readings and we did discover that the atmosphere is made mostly of hydrogen and helium with some other trace elements such as neon and water vapor and this is of course by number of atoms if we go by mass it's about a 75 percent 24 percent breakout for hydrogen and helium by mass and so as we go further down into the planet we can estimate the kind of pressures we would encounter there and then we can estimate whereabouts the hydrogen gas and the helium gas primarily the hydrogen gas because the helium gas tends to turn into little droplets that kind of fall through the the hydrogen uh, layers and we have different layers of hydrogen uh, the outer layer we could call the gas layer which is right below the atmosphere so even below the atmosphere we have a layer that is very hard to distinguish between the atmosphere and that layer as the gas gets compressed more and more as you go deeper into the planet eventually the pressure causes the gas to turn itself into a liquid so you have this thick liquid layer of primarily uh, hydrogen and then if you go even further into the planet the pressure becomes so enormous that it turns into what we call metallic hydrogen now we probably shouldn't think of it in terms of a solid metal there probably is still a fair amount of motion especially in the upper regions of the metallic hydrogen uh, but nevertheless it does have a met metallic properties with other words very highly conductive properties now the temperature in the upper layers of the gas layer will reach a comfortable 340 kelvin which is slightly higher than room temperature that's about uh, what we say about 67 degrees celsius and the pressure there would be about 10 bars or about 10 atmospheres then as we go further in that you notice that the, the temperature will eventually reach about 5000 kelvin which is almost the same temperature as the surface of the sun by the time we reach the point where hydrogen gets compressed into metallic state if we continue to go down uh, well the pressure there required to turn that into metallic hydrogen is about 100 to 200 giga pascals which is about one to two million atmospheres so there's an enormous amount of pressure there pushing the hydrogen atoms into a metallic state and then finally we get to go when we get to the very center of the planet there is a rocky slash ice core now temperatures are so so high that you probably can think of it in terms of ice because the high temperatures there but there's definitely water and rock in that center of the planet and it's estimated to be somewhere around 5 to 20 times the mass of the earth which is quite significant the reason why we think it's that much is because we know what the mass is of Jupiter we know the size of Jupiter from that we can calculate the average density and the average density is quite significantly higher than the average density of Saturn and so to explain that difference we imagine there must be probably a rocky core also the planet is not as oblate in other words the difference between the radius at the polar regions versus the radius at the equator is not quite as high that ratio I guess from equator to pole I should say is not quite as high for Jupiter as it is for Saturn which also may give us some indication that there might be a rocky core near the center which takes up a significant amount of the volume there to make the planet at least a little bit more rigid so that you don't have that oblateness that Saturn has which we believe has much less of a rocky core at the center once we reach the core the temperature there is about 20,000 Kelvin which is almost four times the surface temperature of the Sun the core pressure is estimated to be about 4,500 gigapascals that's about 4.5 trillion pascals oh giga is a billion so that would be 4.5 trillion pascals or about 45 million atmospheres so yes that is an enormous pressure that we find at the center temperatures are really high and it turns out that the temperature the temperature that was uh, created during the formation of the planet with all that energy being absorbed by the by the collision essentially by the 
implosion, or not, I shouldn't say implosion, but all the material falling into the planet because of the strong gravitational forces gave it so much energy that the planet is still essentially cooling down from that period. And it turns out that the temperatures near the surface of the planet still appear to be higher than they should be because of the excess heat still being given off from the interior to the edge of the planet and out into space. But that is what we believe the interior of the planet looks like, primarily made up of hydrogen layers. We have the gas layer, the liquid layer, the metallic layer, and there seems to still be some relatively amount of motion even in the metallic layer we don't expect it to be like a solid metal and therefore that motion of the metallic layer which has a very high conductivity causes potentially the very powerful magnetic fields to exist on the planet and we'll take a closer look at that as well but that's the best we know obviously we have never gone into the planet we have never been able to uh, send a probe into the planet that deep the probe only made it into the upper atmospheric layers and down into the upper uh, gas layers of the planet, so we really don't know for sure what the interior looks like, but based upon all our signs and estimates, it's probably not a bad picture of what it actually looks like inside. So the rocky ice core is 5 to 20 times the mass of the Earth. Is it also 5 to 20 times the volume of the Earth? So since it's made up of rock and ice slash water, you would think that the compression isn't that great. We probably at that pressure, we're looking at a compression of maybe 20, 30, 40 percent. So I would say that it's not quite 5 to 20 times the volume because it's compressed more, but still significantly several times maybe if you take a quarter to a half of that number, so maybe anywhere from two to five times the size of the Earth at the center. Because it doesn't have any oh, I'll take that back. No, no, I'm, I'm doing my math in my head wrong. It's probably more like um, four to 15 times the volume of the Earth. That's probably a pretty good estimate. Yeah. So it doesn't have any metals and everything? They presume it does, probably not a lot. Um, we do know that we find metals in Mars, but not as much as in the other three terrestrial planets. We do find some asteroids that have metal in them, not as much as we would expect to find on the Earth. So the amount of metal you find as you go further out tends to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So by the time you get to Jupiter, we wouldn't expect to find a lot of metal in its core. But they do believe there's probably some metal in the core of Jupiter as well. Mercury and Venus, Mercury by far has the most metal of any terrestrial planet relative to its mass and its size. Yeah, so there's a gradual decline in the amount of metal each planet has. Why is that? Well, that you have to go to another video. <laughs> but no, essentially what happened when the solar system first formed and the, the, the proto star the sun as in its initial development stages when it was radiating out a lot of heat as being compressed due to the pressure it began to essentially melt lighter uh, sub, uh, lighter elements such as uh, or, or lighter molecules such as ice and the gases they became in gaseous form water was being pushed out gas was being pushed out away from the inner solar system due to the solar pressure and the solar winds and then the heavier items such as metal and rock tended to stay close to the sun because they were heavier and we weren't able to push them out as far, as much as we could the other elements that were lighter that's why gas ended up in the farther reach of the solar system and as well as water because it was in vapor form and then rock and metal tended to stay closer to the sun and that's why the terrestrial planets and their asteroids were formed closer to the sun.